Hello and welcome back to part two of our breastfeeding podcast. This is um, the se- second uh, topic that we have discussed in our Golden Thread um, podcast series on ED&I issues. Um, and we really hope that you're enjoying it so far. So in this session, uh, myself, Dr. Aaron Mumtaz, Dr. Jen Moss-Langfield and Dr. Kieran Bilku discuss um the need to be able to bring your whole self to work as a breastfeeding employee um we ha- touch on topics around global maternity rights um and also the uh, importance of being able to be your authentic self um and still be a good employee as well as being able to continue your breastfeeding journey for as long as you want um so please continue listening. We hope you find this information uh, and the discussion useful. Uh, Please do use the resources that we've made available on our website um, associated with the podcast. Um, And without further ado, let's start part two. Actually, over in America, this is really quite common. Women don't have the great maternity leave that we we have in this country and quite often do go back to work at things like six weeks. um, Mm -hmm. And the breast pump you know pumping rooms are a thing uh, and mm. there there is more support for women who do that but i think it is still really difficult for any anyone um so that's what i that's what i thought i would be doing but then mm. covid came and actually i didn't get uh, i only did a very small amount of remote work mm. and uh given the situation i was i was quite glad of that um and although it was financially impacting the, yeah. me I you know it was financially impacting everyone it wasn't in my mm-hmm. control but I did carry on with all my leadership roles um remotely uh, mm-hmm. on teams like like this um mm-hmm. and uh, I made a point of uh, I said I was going to be breastfeeding in those meetings mm-hmm. I breastfed in those meetings <laughs> I just uh, angled the camera up and I had a a presence of of Barney in those meetings I I also made a point of of him being visible in those meetings because Mm. I think that there's quite often only it perceived only one journey where where women go and that's uh, you can go away and hide for Mm. however long you take on your maternity leave and then you can come back and you you may want to bring a photo of your child but other than that really they 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 need to stay out of the workplace um and i felt a little bit uncomfortable with that being the only option i'm a little bit of an older mother um uh uh he i would i think barney is my greatest achievement and and (laughs) i i absolutely I wanted him in there. So I and did. And I showed him there. His face that, was there. That's the thing about bringing your whole self to work as well. So that was yeah. important to you. And you knew that you could do your job despite, you know, it, 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 with 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 Barney there. So what was going to stop you from doing it? There was nothing that was going to um, impact on, on your output as a result. So um, I think that's really, really inspiring. And I think that's what I've got, the two main things that I've got out of that conversation was number one, being prepared. So, you know, having that talk with you or, you know, with yourself almost to say, well, actually, I want to go back to work. Am I breastfeeding? Am I not breastfeeding? If I am wanting to breastfeed, well, what are the practicalities? And having a good think about, well, how is, uh, how, you know, how can I try and balance my work with my need to breastfeed um, or, or express? And then the number two, second thing was um, all, almost writing a list of what your expectations are from your workplace and then presenting that to your practice managers and then getting allies. So speaking to your GP mm-hmm. partner, speaking to, you know, and obviously we're talking as GPs, aren't we? But actually this is for all primary care colleagues. So as admin speaking to your your colleagues or as nurses, et cetera, whoever you might be, speaking to your colleagues first and just saying, well, this is the journey I'm going on and this is what I want to do. And I think actually, all in all, you'll probably get quite a positive response. I don't think anyone wants to not allow you or facilitate um, that journey. Um, but it's being being empowered enough to be able to have that conversation in the first place. So um, it's I mean, Kieran, have you got any uh, any insight into that? Anything that you wanted to add into that conversation? 
Yeah, so I mean, I, thank you, Jen, for sharing. I think it's um, it's really interesting to to hear about your story. And actually, I'll come to introduce myself and how Jen and I sort of link together in a couple of moments. But I have um, I've heard Jen speak about the way that she has approached her return to work, um, and I think it's just it's really really interesting just to have someone who's almost flipped it completely on its head. Mm. Everybody visualizes parental leave. Um, as, uh, you know, a long period of time off work and, and often, um, you know, it sort of has to fit into certain categories and follow mm-hmm. a certain direction. But actually, it doesn't, um, you know, and that's not right for everybody. And mm-hmm. um, so I think it's it's really, really important to have a different perspective. Um, and actually, it's a real eye opener for people. And, and it's empowering to know that you can do this in a different way. Um, so, yeah, no, so thank you, Jen. I think, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's really lovely to, to hear that that's, that's all been really positive and also mm-hmm. that your approach um, to it has, has sort of um, been well received as well. So, yeah. I think you. the other thing is, is the ability to share your story. So I'm glad that we've, uh, you know, Kieran, Kieran introduced you to us because actually um, it, you, you are, you know, you are very much aware of what you want and, and, uh, as I said, ensuring that you can get that as long as it's not impacting work. And so um, I think other women uh, or other mothers who want to breastfeed or continue breastfeeding or expressing when they come back to work, sometimes they need someone to look at to say, OK, well, if they've done it, then actually I can do it. Um, and I had and that so, from my mother that yeah. way mm-hmm. back in the 80s, yeah. you know, that, that she could she could do it, uh, you know, mm-hmm. there and there is a world of possible. I think that the, there is, though, There is always the thing about, although something may be possible, it has to be what you want to do, what you sometimes what you need to do. um, Mm -hmm. But you'll make everything's a choice and you're going to balance all of those things up and work out what is the right thing for you, for you and your baby, for you and your your family. And and that is the most important thing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, That's 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 really 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 insightful and actually a really inspiring story so thank you so much for sharing it I think um I mean just a small insight from my own journey so I was um so I was on mat leave uh, during COVID so I had twins um and actually one decided that she wanted to breastfeed and the other one decided that she didn't want to breastfeed so you know women are there are there's so many things that you have to think about as a mother um and and feeding I think definitely consumed a lot of my time um and so it is it's at that balance and, and it's that um it, it's knowing what your baby needs it's knowing what you need as an individual but it's also feeling empowered to tell p- other people that actually this is what we need and I can make it work this is what I need from you um uh, it, it, you know I think sometimes people almost dread having that conversation with practice managers or or, or colleagues because they think oh god it's going to get poorly really poorly received but you know I think it's that old age saying what if you don't ask you don't get so um so for those that want to continue that breastfeeding journey make it easier for yourself and I think one of the reasons actually that this um event uh was really important to me was whilst I was on maternity leave actually three of my sisters were also on maternity leave um and all, none of them are medics um so two were teachers and and one's a lawyer and they all had such different journeys in terms of um, you know, their breastfeeding and how they did that when they went back to work. It definitely helps that post-COVID we're a lot more remote. But actually, when you have that, you know, teachers have to go in and teach their children. There's You have to be face to face. Just as in, in clinic, we have to go and see our patients. It has to be face to face. So her her experience of breastfeeding as a teacher was very different to mine in the sense of she knew what she had spoken to her line manager and they had already given her a private room they had given her half an hour in the morning and in the daytime uh, sorry in the afternoon to make sure that she had that time to go away from the classroom and 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 pump um when I first heard that I just thought my goodness imagine trying to ask to get out of clinic for half an hour (laughs) in the morning and in, and in, in the in the afternoon but actually I didn't even ask so so you know that's 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 the bit that I want to make sure people are understanding that it can work and people will help facilitate that journey. It's about asking and it's about knowing that you are allowed to ask. Uh, sometimes people feel they need that permission and, and I hope actually listening to your story, they realise that that's absolutely what they can do. Um, and, and generally the feedback will be positive.